Hi, everybody. I'm Ashley Graham, and you are here on my podcast, Pretty Big Deal. Today, we're going to talk about beauty, diversity, and owning who you are. Make sure you go on Instagram and Twitter to give us some of your comments. And don't forget Anchor. You can leave me a little voice message there. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear what's going on. So you have seen her on the covers of Teen Vogue, on the covers of Allure and Glamour. Have I missed any? Oh my gosh, I love the hype. I'm like, who's this person? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies going. and gentlemen, she grew up in Kenya and now she's here in New York City, but she doesn't live here and I'm trying to get her to move here. Halima Aiden! <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Hi! First of all, you just flew in this morning. Yes. And now only you're for you. And you're flying out and tonight. I'm flying out. <laughs> I mean, you could keep me. But. Are you ever going to move to New York? Are you offering? I mean, okay. She's like, come stay with me. I'll we give you can, a room. We can literally get into this, I think, because every time I see you, I'm like, move to New York. And then you say... When we get that move to New York, uh, Mula, then we're going to move. But okay. right now, Minnesota is good, girl. Minnesota's She's living good. luxury in Minnesota. Um, okay, so Halima and I first met um, at Miss USA. Yes. And it was in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And we had this like podcast kind of video that we had to, to film. Mm -hmm. I forgot what publication it was for. Whatever. Oh, I remember. Cosmo. Oh, it was? Okay. Yes. And it was you, me, and um, Miss USA, the current <clears throat> Miss USA. Mm -hmm. And some other people, and we just had a great time. I fell in love with you. I thought you were the cutest little thing ever, and we just had fun. And then we stayed in touch. And now I've seen you at during Fashion Week. I've mm -hmm. even seen you um, when we're both getting paparazzi following us. <laughs> By the way, you need to tell everybody those tips are near and dear to my Wait, heart. Wait, what did I say again? Because I was trying to tell my friend the other day. So I was like standing and. I don't know. I had like a 30 minute session with the paps and then I was like, okay, yeah, you take it from this angle. Okay, lower, lower, take it from this angle. And then you walked by, not even walked by, girl, you ran by. And I was like, oh. And then you caught me in the elevator and you were like, girl, let me give you advice. You want them to want more. You don't give them everything. You just walk past. And then like that gives them like, and I was like, okay, I'll try this. I'm not going to lie. Those pictures, when I ran, I was like, <laughs> so I was like, okay, no thank you, Ashley Graham. Until I can supermodel, oh I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take my time, concentrate on my pose. Oh, my God. So when we were in Italy together, which we were just in Italy together, mm -hmm. which was so much fun. Lake Como. I know. Uh, so beautiful. I had gotten to know you a little bit more, even because we've mm -hmm. had to spend more time together. And I didn't realize that you were raised in a refugee camp. Mm -hmm. And I would like to just know basically everything and okay. the beginning. Okay. Ready, go. <laughs> okay, so the camp. Um, I always, to be honest, we, I didn't know we were refugees. I didn't know what brought my mom there. Like, cause you know, you're six. You don't know what a s legal status is or where, where you are in like the country, right? right? All I had known is this is my home. This is my block. I was in a zone. Uh, we had different block numbers. Uh -huh. So I knew the neighborhood really, really well. And I had a lot of friends. Um, so you were in an actual neighborhood, girl. Yes, we oh. had our own little we had our own little cliques too, and <laughs> yeah, funny story. My mom used to move us around the camp so we could be like more with, cause you know, um, Somalis it, it make a good number of like the people that live there, the population, but okay. it's also Sudan people, Sudanese people, wow, Rwandan, like all over Africa, Ethiopian. So early on, my mom moved us to like different places. Okay, that's why when I was reading your book, and I was like, yes, girl, I understand that, like. But mine wasn't as like, like yours, like actually moving well, from state to state. Mine was like just different, different homes. <laughs> also, just like completely different countries, homes. like not even like on the same, mm. yeah, level. Okay, uh, but, but yeah. you were born in Somalia and then you moved to Kenya at six. No, Kenya is all I know. Kenya is so all. You were born in Kenya. I was born in a uh, refugee camp in Kenya wow. called Kakuma, uh -huh. and. Kakuma actually stand, the translation of Kakuma in Swahili is actually middle of nowhere. Oh. So it's kind of sad that they put everybody like in the middle of nowhere. Middle of nowhere, but. And so you actually liked how you were raised in the refugee camp. I thought we were wealthy. I'm not going to lie. Yes. I kind of shook. <laughs> <laughs> I found out what we were in America. Like, I did not think we were like living in poverty because. It says a lot. 
it says a lot, right? It does. Yeah. It has the character of her of her family and right, how they raised right. you. Yeah, because I used to be like, oh, today we have a house, and then it could rain and it washes away. But guess what? We're gonna build a new one. And so early mm. on, I used to be like, oh, back back in Africa, we used to have three houses. One was by the street. One was by a little tree. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, so I was kind of shook. But like, you, that's amazing because I feel like a lot of, I mean, a lot of the people, way people are raised now, it's like it's about things and it's not about mm -hmm. like the heart of the home and wherever your family was, that's where, where where your heart and your actual home was. Yes, but I also do think uh, the UN played a big role in that. Okay. Um. So, I I think they did a good job of like the people that lived there they really did have dignity and pride and you know what I mean mm -hmm. and also what helped was everybody was like living in similar like situations so mm -hmm. I think like n now like the struggle in America is like you could be going to school but if you're that poor kid like you know you're comparing yourself to other kids like oh why doesn't my family have that big house right you know like their parents are doctors we all were like the same thing, so I think that made it easier. Right. Yeah. Because then, okay, so I think I got something backwards. You didn't move there when you were six. You moved to America when you were six. Mm -hmm. So what was that like? Ooh, and why? Child. And why did you move to America? <laughs> um. Okay. So we were supposed to move to Australia. Okay. It's a really long vetting process. I think people sometimes forget, like, in order to become a like, let's say, citizen, we didn't just become citizens right away or get to choose where we got. Move to. move to right, right. Mm -hmm. it was all luck and also just like what country is willing to take you in and yeah. actually a lot of refugees never leave a div like they never ever get the chance to like come to a developed country the lottery right it's literally yeah. a lottery is it like that mm -hmm. like you 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 just put your name in and then they tell you where you're going well i don't know about that girl but oh. i i know like for our camp we even had a which funny story i think it's still there we had a board and they used to stamp the names of like the refugees that are getting to resettle. Uh -huh. So I remember like that was such a big deal. Like people would all gather up and then like clap and cry and like be really, mm -hmm. and I never knew what it was about. I used to actually feel bad cause like one of my friends once moved and I was like, why is she going? I want her to stay here forever. <laughs> Meanwhile, she was moving to like Meanwhile. have a better life. Yeah, but you don't understand that when you're a kid. Cause are you still in touch with all of these, any, anybody from the refugee camp? Very much. Well, really? I'm, I, I'm personally not okay. because some of those folks aren't connected to <laughs> the okay. internet. Oh, okay. So that makes it hard. <laughs> but um, right. my mom, a funny story, when I went to, I don't know why I keep saying funny story. It's really not that That's funny. Okay. But when I was going to Kenya, she, uh, oh, remember uh. that, did I show you the list of names? She wanted me to take books back to like some of the kids that she knew, like she knew from there and like right. medicine and, you know, stuff like that that some of her friends when still you there. went back to Kenya for your Vogue shoot mm -hmm. <laughs> she's like take the I'm like girl <laughs> the way this charter plane works I'm allowed like I think one bag it wasn't a, like one bag or something I was like oh I cannot be taking books and so your mom was basically like because I really I do want to get into your Vogue shoot and I want to get into Kenya and going back because I feel like that was probably really emotional in a lot mm -hmm. of ways but I also want to hear about moving to America so you moved to St. Louis Missouri mm -hmm. <laughs> but mm -hmm. what was that like you have difficult. a sad face <laughs> <laughs> that was really difficult because it was the first time that because in the camp I used to translate for my mom I spoke like fluent Somali it's my first language right. and also Swahili and so to come to like a new country and not speak the language that was really hard for me like my teachers thought I was shy for like the first three years of you living. <laughs> Huh. She just doesn't speak English, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> the minute I caught on, they're like, oh, wait, it's a new person. It's a new kid. Who's this student? <laughs> because nobody was speaking Somali when you went there. Yeah, and also, like, the school didn't have, like, an English uh, immersion like class, right. like an ELL, ESL. Right. And how are you going to catch up with the other students when you don't have that? So then why did you leave St. Louis and move to Minnesota? St. Cloud, Minnesota. St. Cloud, Minnesota. Okay, Hello. so... <laughs> my mom kept hearing like uh, there's a large Somali population in St. Cloud and I don't know why everybody wanted to migrate to like uh, Minnesota because like weather wise it's very different than Africa. Girl it's not different <laughs> it's like drastic it's, it's like really we've got another snowstorm coming in and it's gonna be about negative five degrees so what I happened then what changed like why did you guys leave why'd you leave St. Louis why'd you go to Minnesota? St. Louis, okay, the, cause again, like you don't get to, you don't have a say in like where you move. So 
when we moved from uh, Oh, again, still, you don't have a say when, where you are in America then, too? Mm -hmm. Well, and you can move, but, like, when you... That's the city we landed in, you oh, know? Okay. So that's the city that was, like, our host. And I think we had, like, okay. um, a f another family host us for a little bit, like, a week, I think, to just show, show my mom things. Right. Um, but it was a bad neighborhood in mm. St. Louis. Like, it was really crime-filled. The streets looked really impoverished. Wow. At night, I would hear gunshots, and I'm like, wow, we didn't even used to, like, really hear gunshots in the camp ever. So in a way, like, I felt unsafe in that neighborhood than I did in my camp. Wow. Because my camp is mostly women and children. Even even today, it's like 60% of the population is kids. That's yeah, so kids interesting. Yeah, kids everywhere. That's insane. Yeah. So that's why we moved from St. St. Louis to uh, St. Cloud. But also, like, education was much better. Because, you know, the community has had, like, had enough time to, like, get used to Somalis and other, other people from c other c uh, countries who, mm -hmm. like, their kids maybe don't speak English. So I think the school system in Minnesota was a lot better. They were much more, like, just ready for you guys to come through. Because, yes. yeah, okay, yeah. I got it. Now then, what was high school like? Because now you're in a now you're somewhere where you not only speak English. You had Somalis in your high school. Yes. I said it right. Yes, you okay, did. Okay, so you had Somalis in your high school, and um, but I feel like your high school experience was amazing. It was perfect. It was like I want. Sometimes I think like, oh my, like high school was really great. What's what's life gonna be like? You know? Yeah, because my Ooh. high school was. Bad. Where's Pete? We're gonna find Pete. Mm. Oh, I know, okay. girl. Okay. It's so funny because in y when you write a book, you have to change names. Ah, oh, Pete don't exist. No, oh, I he mean changed his name. His oh, name, no, you kept it. No, like his name legally is not Pete for legal issues. Oh, okay. So when people are like, "Where's Pete? We Where's all mess Pete? him up." I'm like, "Oh yeah, what you mean to say is <laughs> right." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, Pete. Pete was a really bad guy." But okay. yes, Pete was an, was a dick. Okay. Yeah, okay. you didn't have any Pete's in your life, did you? Oh, thank God. I dodged that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why high school was so good. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. Yeah. Wait, and I know cuz I read your Teen Vogue article <gasps> that you became um, prom queen. How, oh, homecoming. 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 <laughs> yeah. I know, but wait, wait. for my school, homecoming was the bigger deal. It was like it a one-week event. It was a whole debacle. Girl, they, w oh. Oh. Okay, let's talk about what you wore. Okay. Who'd you go with? Oh. Tell me everything. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so our school, no kidding, was one week. Like, one week. And when I say, like, uh. Wait, your whole school was one week of just homecoming. Just homecoming, just girl, every day. Or, like, every day there was an event? Every day there was an event. It's so like one New York day, Fashion Week? It's like New York Fashion Week. <laughs> <laughs> so you always come prepared. Every day. One day was pajama. One day was, like, school spirit. One day. Anyways, that's not the. I think homecoming was the first time that I realized, wow, I'm going to have a different experience. That Even though, like, we're students, we go to Apollo, like, I was nominated. It was my peers who picked me, but still, my experience was so different compared to them. And it was, like, the first time that I really realized, like, we just have different, we have different upbringings mm -hmm. because when they, when it was a uh, time for them to come to my home, mm -hmm. my mom was like, who are these kids coming? What? You, boys? You're not going in there? It was literally like, what do you mean you're going to tape her like waking up? Because that's what they do. They come over to your house at like 3 a.m. And then they do confetti and like cheese. If you were the homecoming queen? Yeah, to tell you, you got nominated. So they go to all This eight. is so aggressive. That's I know. adorable. That's adorbs. I love that. I mean, is this what they did Special. in your school? No, no, no. No, oh. I'm from Miami. We don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> Minnesota. Yeah. Nothing else to do. Nothing this else is what we do. <laughs> Oh, we look no. at raccoons and like, yeah, it was like <laughs> And a we big wake deal. you up at 3 a.m. to tell you're the queen. <laughs> <laughs> Not the queen, just that you were nominated. So it's wow. like. Just that you were nominated? Wow. <laughs> but my mom was like, who are these kids? Like, right. what's happening? Right. Ah, funny story. I couldn't even do it at my house because my mom was like, people ain't coming. No, 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 no. Yeah. And then I ended up finding out because my friend was like, how else am I going to tell this dirty rat to wear a headscarf? Ah! You know, I sleep with like hair right. up like. Tch, right, tch, tch, right. Tch. So it was just, that was like the first time that I realized like, oh my gosh, my experience is going to be different. And then when it was time for my mom to, parents, parents, yeah. to walk you down the aisle, uh -huh. not, <laughs> down the aisle, the gym yeah. for like the day that the queen is announced, 
my mom was not having it because she doesn't understand the culture. She's like, I send you to school to go learn. Get that, get that diploma, right, you yeah, know? What right. do you mean you want me to walk you in a gym? How old are you? Mm, yeah. It's not about clicks. It's not about who's popular. It's about education. Mm -hmm. So did she understand it whenever you told her, like, no, mom, I'm, I might be the queen? Oh, she did not. Even to this day, she's like, I don't know why you bring this up in interviews. She's like, is this your proudest accomplishment? I'm like, yes, it actually <laughs> is. <laughs> yes, mother, it is on my resume. It is my one and only accomplishment. <laughs> So do they understand basically like the social justice aspect of your job? Because you are the first ever hijabi to walk down the runway, to be on the covers of Glamour, Allure, Teen Vogue. I mean, Corrine Rotfield found you. I mean, like these are pivotal moments for any model's career. Mm -hmm. But there's, it's not, you're not just a pretty face. You're not just a girl wearing heels. You're not just a girl in a hijab. Like you're there letting other women know who look like you that you too can be beautiful. Mm -hmm. Have they, has it clicked for them? Negative. Wow. <laughs> I'm telling you, different culture. Like, no, they don't understand. My, like, the older people in the family really don't understand that concept. Because mm -hmm. my mom always says, why look to other people for your confidence? You know, why don't you, why aren't you enough? You know what I mean? Mm. So when I tell her like representation is important, like stuff like that, for her, I guess she's not bothered with it because it doesn't really affect her. Right. For her, it's more like, why can't you be independent, go to college, graduate on time? Like those are the stuff that really matter to her. But I will say like in my work with UNICEF, I think that's the first time that she's truly proud of me when it comes to something around modeling. Right. Um, but that's a big accomplishment. Yeah. I want to know how that even started. Day one, IMG. Like, um, oh, yeah, we at the same agency, <laughs> y'all. IMG. She repping. She hey. repping. <laughs> They're really one of the most diverse agencies in the yeah. world. Yeah. I think maybe they are the most diverse agency in the world. Yeah. So, and we're there. And you're there. You we. actually. Am I? <laughs> Can we check? <laughs> um, no, seriously. I was like, when I was, because I didn't know what an IMG is. Um, I'll admit what that. Is an what IMG? is an IMG? <laughs> what does it stand for up to today? I don't know. <laughs> International Modeling Agency. No, agency, Group. IMG. Group. <laughs> Twitter, Twitter you can take her and drag her appropriately now. <laughs> uh, after this, she's no longer, they just come up with the statement. But We're now no it's just all called Endeavors because of WME. Okay. Yeah. I want to talk about, I want to talk about how, yes, we're at IMG mm -hmm. and we are the tokens. Like, not at IMG, but we're the tokens when it comes to um, a beauty panel. We're the token mm -hmm. when it comes to a campaign. We're the token when it comes to a runway. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to you? knowing that you're going to be the only girl wearing a hijab? Ooh, Miss Ashley Graham. <laughs> I guess, I, okay, when did you find out that you were Girl, you can't twist this back on me <laughs> and say question with a question. I can answer it for you. Okay, answer. No, because I'm still figuring that out. I guess for the longest time, I maybe I'm oblivious, but for the longest time, I honestly used to be like, no, I don't see myself as a token. No, because mm -hmm. why, why would I when... Already, I see girls are being uh, signed. Mm -hmm. Well, Amina just announced that they have their first hijab-wearing model. See? So I'm like, am I still the token if there's other models being signed? And besides, somebody had to be the first, right? No, of course. I think, to me, there's a difference between the first and a token. Mm -hmm. um, I think the first just sets a staple for what we need to see in fashion and what should be already considered norm mm -hmm. and in media as like a, a relevant thing um but then there's the token when you go and you're shooting a campaign or you're in a runway and you're the only one and you're always the only one yeah. and i think that if you say no to these things then you're offering you're not offering a seat at the table mm -hmm. for everyone who's quote different like you mm -hmm. and so i will always say yes it, even if i am the only girl because i don't look at it as I'm the token and I and 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 I'm the only one that's going to be represented in this. I feel like when I show up, I'm representing a community. Mm -hmm. Um so I don't take it personally, mm -hmm. but some people do and I love to have that conversation. I mean, mm -hmm. clearly you don't. Um but you know, it starts to get kind of like strange when you only see like one of your kind or like, mm -hmm. you know, you've looked at so many different campaigns, you've only seen one Asian, one yeah. black, yeah. one redhead. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't even see a hijab girl 
or you don't even see a curvy girl. So mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying. Like, does it start to affect you? Do you start to feel like I'm the token? Where's everybody else? <clears throat> I think for me, I understand. Like, it's it, it's probably the industry too because five years ago, heck, even two years ago, would I still be? where I am career-wise, I don't know if the industry would have been ready for a hijab-wearing model right. at that point, right? Because for me, like, yes, it's like, I'm like any other model, right. but also I have requirements. Like, I can't just, it, it just requires a little bit of like thought, you know, I can't just show up and not, where am I gonna get dressed, you know? Right. Like, am I gonna, you know? Right. Cause the hijab doesn't come off backstage, you know? So it's like, it was a long time for, um, I think, this to happen, but also for my community. We didn't just get here like that, because I think that's that was what was really hard for me was, and it's still hard for me, it's like, okay, if this is okay, if this is fine, why, why was I the first, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like, <clears throat> you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. maybe if it was acceptable, maybe if it was the right thing to do, maybe somebody else would have done it already. Then maybe you would see more hijab wearing, um, hijab models yeah like other other girls so sometimes like that's hard for me but mm-hmm. I understand we're not there as a community because I took a lot of backlash I, I don't think girls realize when they're like I want to be a model I want to <laughs> I had many nights where I was like breaking down to Denise or like you know and it started with the pageant because that was like how I was introduced to like right you know what I mean right because you started at Miss Minnesota mm-hmm. and and then you kind of just it turned into it just snowballed like right away like Kareen <laughs> Raphael like calls hey hey girl hey <laughs> come to New York come shoot for Mario Sorrenti I was like okay. wait a second Google Your first photo shoot was with Mar- Mario Sorrenti mm-hmm. and I remember deal. this was a big deal for like uh, the other like it's Kareem. a big deal for me. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> so I Googled, I'm like, Mario Sorrenti. And then all you see is nude photos. Yeah, and, and I then... was like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and your yeah. mother's definitely like, oh, no, you're not yes. going there. <laughs> I didn't know what to tell my mom for that initial IMG, like, meeting. Because I think we did both combined. Like, IMG, because I, I think I did the photo shoot even before it was signed. Okay. So I was like... I'm not, if I tell my mom a photo shoot, she's, she might think like, oh, you're going to get taken advantage of. What kind of pictures? Like, da, da, da. Right. So I was like, I'm going to be like, I'm meeting up with an agency. So you didn't even tell her you were doing a photo shoot? No. <laughs> mom, <laughs> did you know that uh, one? Because it was hard. And, but I remember that first picture that dropped was like me with two, actually. One was like a little weird because I had like a... Uh, it was black leather. It was like, oh, okay. It was just a little like, oh, blacky, like, da, da, da. Oh, wait, wait, was it like S and M kind of? Kind of a little oh. like halal S and M. If that makes sense, <laughs> I was like, oh. did you feel like a little inappropriate in it? I loved it though. It's not- <laughs> Like I, I really loved it. I thought it was like different than what I usually like would have worn. Right. So I think I, I think I love the S and M. Like, yes. And Mario's, he's such an amazing man. I think yeah. he's a great photographer. He is. I remember. He's so funny too. He's like, yes, give me sexy. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> first like, time hearing that from a guy. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. Oh, girl. I got yeah. <laughs> my first time with Mario Sorrent shooting with Mario Sorrenti. I was, I had no clothes on. So. Same same, so same do those same. shoots get awkward? I, I always like, are you... Do they get awkward? <laughs> you know what? I feel like I've done enough naked photo shoots in my day yeah. that like I just, I don't even wear a robe anymore to set. I just walk from hair and makeup to the set butt naked. Wow. I know. Wow. Or anywhere naked. Or anywhere, just right. in general. I do walk around my house naked. <laughs> Speaking of being modest and you were talking about, you know, just showing up on set, mm-hmm. you can't... You can't just take your clothes off. You can't just go and change like all the other girls yeah. on the in in a runway show. What do people? What do they do? Do they do they like set up for you? What is the situation? They do. They do exactly that. And sometimes, like um, even for busy, t- like even if it's busy, busy like a uh, fashion fashion week, right? Mm-hmm. For the shows, I think that's the part that really blew me away. I'm like, oh, they could have just been like, go use the bathroom or go find go find a corner, right? But instead, like they built a little corner for me. It's wow. So it's like everybody else changes here, and then I have my own little. Because you know, backstage men can come. Oh yeah, no, it gets crazy backstage yeah. at runway shows. Has and I feel guilty sometimes because I'm like, skirt skirt into my little corner, <laughs> like uh, my. 
four core right. thingy, my <laughs> private dressing room. And Your then pop I'm just up like, tent. Yeah. And I think even the other models, like, I think that was like one of the saddest things, but also it made me feel like, wow, they're actually putting in work because one of the models was like, wow, I really wish we had that. And I was like, why don't you have that? <laughs> That's really interesting. You know? I'm, has it ever gotten awkward before? No, I mean, even even though, like, it's just, I think people understand, like, I'm, I'm wearing a hijab, like, it does not come off, you know, it's mm -hmm. not something, like, it's just for presented at the runway. Mm -hmm. It also follows me backstage, so I think girls are very respectful, they understand. Um, That's great. No, yeah. So nobody's ever been like, hey, are you going to take it off? Only Fadil, I'm kidding, though. <laughs> <laughs> Fadil is so funny. No, no, no. Who is Fadil? He's my favorite photographer, Fadil okay. Bursha. No, he, everybody's super respectful. Like, that's not even a question that ever comes up is, when are you going to take it off? Are you going to take it off? That's good. You know? So they respect who you are. They respect your religious background, and, and that's it. Yeah. That's and it should be. Modeling is not how I thought, girl, when I tell you. when I <laughs> After that meeting, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to get signed, but best believe I'm going to do my research. So I watched, bin, binge watched all of Tyra Banks' uh, America's Next Top like, Model. Yes. yes. Did you I see didn't my, get to yours, did you though. Did season? Oh, she said nope, not yet. Nope, not yet. I didn't get to yours yet. <laughs> I like the friend. old ones. You're not a real fan. You're not a real friend. <laughs> She's not a real one. <laughs> uh -uh. No, I didn't get to your season yet, but I watched, like, basically from cycle one to, like, cycle 14. That's, like, the sweet spot. Yeah, of course. And then did you learn anything? Absolutely not. <laughs> 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 because, honey, like, that's not... It's like, not what, where can I have a snake uh, photo shoot? You know what I mean? Like, right. the stuff that I watch, I'm like, interesting. And same with, like, the girls. I am I got really lucky, I think, because I have not experienced, thank God, no, there's some any weird cattiness. Stuff. There's some weird stuff that they, they make them do on Top Model. There, there's some crazy stuff. Like, one of the craziest things I ever had to do was a back bend and in, in seven-inch heels on the Brooklyn Bridge. And that What's was... What's a back bend? Bend. Like literally, like a back oh. bend. Yeah, like oh. gymnastics. Have you ever had to do anything crazy like that yet? I think from like the first five minutes that people get to meet me on set, they realize, oh, this girl is very clumsy. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> like she, oh, not flexible at all. So they don't, they don't make me do. But they don't make I you will do say bends. they make me jump, and that's oh. very exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> she don't work out. <laughs> she don't go to the gym. <laughs> Um, okay, so I want to talk about UNICEF because I feel like this is, like you said, your mom's so proud of you, mm -hmm. and this is a really big accomplishment. How did this all start? Day one, like, you know, I think that's the other thing, too. People always, I think, sometimes don't know why I'm so passionate about UNICEF. It's really from a selfish place because mm -hmm. that was the organization that helped my family personally. Before I could even spell my own name, I could tell you the words to UNICEF. Really? So that that was how, like, personal it was what is for it? me. U N. C I F T G L E. <laughs> Spelling has gone downhill, I will say. <laughs> the older I'm, I'm getting, the, the prettier she got, yeah. the less she read. Yeah, I will admit that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know before we started, she was like, I got your book. I haven't read it yet. I just finished one, one page. Two chapters. Oh. Actually, maybe three. That's okay. It's you all right. Listen to it. Literally, the audio. I did not know about the audio. I promise. Yeah, I did no, not. Don't. Why struggle through the pages when you could listen? Girl, girl, please, <laughs> and does it come in your voice? Um, so uh -oh. I opened it and I closed it. I just didn't have time to do the middle. I know. I know. So I'm just gonna have to pretend like. Oh it's wait. Me. I did do an audition and I found the right girl and bada bing, bada boom. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Mm. Well, speaking of books, when are you gonna write your book? Why is there crickets in the room right crickets, now? Crickets. You have so much to say. Okay, I know what you can talk about in your book. And one of the things you can talk about is going back to Kenya. Give me pen, paper, everybody. Right? Yeah. No, write seriously. that down, write that down. No, but I want to talk about that because you shot your Teen Vogue cover in Kenya back at the refugee camp that you were raised in. And mm -hmm. I want to know, like, what was that like? Girl, that was the most... Uh, I don't think I've ever had um, emotionally, physically, like that trip was probably one of the hardest I've ever done ever in my life. And that trip I think was maybe one of the most difficult things that I had to do only because it was like a combined, <clears throat> my, look at my voice, it's cracking already. It's okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. This, you got this. But I'm sure, <clears throat> I'm sure yeah. that it was. So much emotion because yeah. on one hand, I'm an adult, I'm going back, I'm like, you know, I got to see best of both worlds, like the camp life and also growing up in America. Mm -hmm. And then 
going there and seeing that it's gotten bigger, it's good because that means people are finding it like, you know, they don't have to suffer in silence. They don't mm. have to stay in like war torn countries. Mm. You know, they f found a place to call home that's safe, that they know their children are going to get whatever help that they need, or at least, you know, organizations are trying to do their best. But then on the other hand, it's like, oh, my gosh, like my family got to leave this, you know, and mm. I always think, did I make the most out of my life? Did I take any, uh, you know what I mean? Because it's like, there are girls my age that have babies that will never, ever leave that camp. So mm. to see that that could have been me, it was just really, it was a really hard pill to swallow. Did you feel guilty walking back I'm in? I'm so guilty. Oh, my gosh. Ashley Graham, I'm gonna mess up my makeup. It's okay. <laughs> Who's gonna touch it up for me? We've got people. Okay. No, it's it was okay. it was just really hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Only well, because their kids like literally, and they're the happiest kids. That was like what was an another thing. Like I remember a happy childhood, mm -hmm. and I thought I was going crazy, like talking to all these, in, like you know, even during interviews, people are like. Did you say refugee camp and happy childhood in like the same sentence? Because it's hard to for, it's hard for them to understand. But I was like, wait a minute, is this some kind of like Stockholm syndrome? Like paint it over to make you feel better? But no, these kids are literally like the happiest kids in the world. Wow. Yeah, they were like waving at our like cars mm -hmm. and like that's all they wanted to do was just be like, ah, you know what I mean? Did you get to see any friends that were still there, or you did? Yeah, uh, David. Aww, that guy so was there literally when I started my first day at school. So he's Aww. like, is your mom still crazy? I was like, she still got it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because he's like, she used to make me shah, which is like Somali tea. And she, he's like, she was just like loud, very loud, very like, you know, happy lady. Are you glad that you got to have that experience with Teen Vogue? Yes. But also it was Teen Vogue. UNICEF was on the ground with me and... Also, it was a TED Talk. You had to also give a TED Talk? In the camp! Oh, Lord. I know. So <laughs> I, part of me was like, I wish I had more time to just be and just not do anything, but just listen and meet the people that live there. Um, I didn't even get to go to, like, the protection area. It, it's four different, uh, four different camps. So we got to, like, see a little bit of all the camps, but I wish I got to go to, like, the schools, like every little camp, like I wish I got to like meet people and like. It wasn't enough time. It was four days, but it was like jam packed, which was perfect because th that's what I can do. You know, like me going there and I could go there. I could even spend a month there and like volunteer, which I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, but I also recognize like I'm, I'm more useful when I get there and I'm with like Ted and we're doing a talk in a refugee camp. Mm -hmm. Also, there are other speakers that did their talks there. And it was just an incredible like they because, you know, Ted has like a certain quality. <laughs> well, I know. I know. I got, I got to watch yours. I got to watch yours. Funny story. I actually had to watch yours, Iskra, because Iskra's my homegirl. I was like uh, prepping for this. And of course, like I still got there and I was like, ah. <laughs> no, it's hard. It's hard to give a TED talk, especially if you're going back home to yeah. somewhere where you thought maybe I would never even go back to. No. And here you are. And you're doing a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me about your TED talk? Okay. So it was Kakuma, a place of hope. Okay. You know, that was like the whole like gist of my speech was, no, this is a refugee camp. You got that right. But it's also the place of hope. It's where I learned to it's where I learned to be a kid and where I learned to have characteristics. And I think, I don't think I would have been the same person had I grown on Charlotte Road. <laughs> you know what I mean? If that yeah. was all I've ever known, I don't think I would have been like the same person I am now. That's Good amazing. and bad. So that's what your whole talk was about. It was like, it doesn't matter like where you're born. It matters who you are and mm -hmm. how you handle your experiences. And the community, like Akuma has hands down one of the best communities mm. like um early on i we didn't have um our school that's a different story girl <laughs> but which school in the kakuma school? oh in kakuma okay yeah. yeah okay so every day i'd go to school and be like hey hey uh, other thing teacher that's the only thing you can say you teacher teacher i was that fob fob kid calling the teacher teacher for like the first five years what's <laughs> that fob 
fresh off the boat. <laughs> oh, no. I did not know that. Cut. Oh. <laughs> now I, I want to talk about what's going on in the country. And mm-hmm. I want to talk about how mm-hmm. there is so much that's been shifting in the U.S. and in other countries with refugees coming here mm-hmm. and U.S. denying them. And I, I want to hear from you. I want to really know, like, what do you, what's your take on this? What do you have to say to United citizens or U.S. citizens and and to the government? <clears throat> I would say, I look at like my my journey, right? Like, I'm a refugee. Like, mm-hmm. that was that was my entire childhood, right? But look at me now. Like, I've gotten to go to school here. I. I'm a proud taxpayer, honey. <laughs> like, I will say, I think when I was filing my taxes this year, he's like, I don't think I've ever had someone this cheerful. I was like, take my money, yeah. honey. Because <laughs> I, I felt like for the first time, I'm contributing. Like, yes. <laughs> Ask me about it next thing. year, though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley's like, oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait, girl. But you know what I mean? Like, we're proud taxpayers. Like, I look at, like, the Muslims here who are, like, lawyers, attorneys, teaching your children at school. You know what I mean? Like, mm. these are... These are people who are literally giving back to this community and also a community back home. I don't think sometimes people realize, like, it's hard in a sense to be a refugee because you always have those ties back home. Mm. Like, when I was 16, I wasn't just working to pay my cell phone bill and, like, for my extra money for, mm. for shoes or whatever. Like, most other girls, most of my other friends, I had a family to support back home, mm-hmm. you know? So it's really like, hey, government, hey, U.S. citizens. Be who, financially smart, you know what I mean? No, but it, you're actually like telling them like we need to let families into America. We do need to be a refuge mm-hmm. for those those countries that need us. Yeah. Because look at Alima. Really? There's so many other people out there that are also just thriving, and yeah. I think it's a beautiful thing. And I I don't want to see any more families separated. Never again. And I think that's another thing too. Like I could never picture. Like, when you separate kids from their families, it's very traumatic to those kids, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, that should just not be a thing, Mm -hmm. you know? Families need to be kept together. It doesn't matter if it's a a Spanish family, if it's a Somali family, if it's... Ecuadorian, whatever. Stay together, you know what I mean? Because um, that just sets them up for exploitation and abuse, and there's so many horrible stuff that could happen. Have you and your mom had this conversation about all the families that have been separated in, in the U.S. recently? My mom is definitely like, I think like most most people, she 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 understands like kids need to be kept with families, mm-hmm. but also it's like um, for her, it's interesting. My mom and I have these debates, and she's like, you know, part of the reason why I brought you to this country is so you could learn, grow, like be this independent woman, and then also don't forget the community back home. Like mm-hmm. she really wants me to go back to Somalia one day and work with the kids and make sure because you know brain drainage is a real thing Mm -hmm. and I think about Somalia like we all left but now things are changing in the country because a lot of people have gone back and started businesses there and have helped the the people still living there wow you know so it's it's smart for the country have you gone back to Somalia? Never. <gasps> Ashley Graham come to Somalia with me. Let's go. Ashley Graham I'm going to Ethiopia for Christmas. (gasps) Oh, yeah, yeah, we talked about yeah. this. We talked about this. I mean, I know they're not, like, right Justin, next door, right? but, like, still, I'm going to Africa. Let's all go. Yes, invite Africa. me. Africa. Uh, you're invited. Ethiopian food is delicious. Girl, I can't wait. I'm going to be all up in that. What's Somali food like? Depends on where you go. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I will say, though, I had stomach, goat stomach for the first time. Oh, that oh. thing stays in your hair. Like, oh, I had to, oh. I don't, I don't know if I want to know. No. I know. It's yeah. It's very, no. Okay, so something that we do on Pretty Big Deal is we highlight a person or an initiative that's really doing something to transform their community and also the world. And I like this because it's kind of like my hashtag Woman Crush Wednesday, mm-hmm. but it's like my Woman Crush podcast. Um, so there's a young girl. Her She's a Swedish student and an activist, and her name is... Ellen Aronson, and she refused to sit on the airplane before they took off because there was a refugee from Afghanistan on the plane, and he was trying to seek asylum in Sweden, but he was being shipped back. And Mm -hmm. she, for whatever reason, knows about all of the refugees there and does not want them to be sent back, um, but specifically this man. And so everybody on the airplane was like, sit down, sit down, get, one woman even hit her. Um, 
and then towards the end, started people started standing up for her. But she did all of this on a live stream, and she's crying, and she's going through all these emotions with you. And it was just incredible to have mm -hmm. this young girl, 21 years old. Wait, first of all, you're only 20 years old. We haven't even spoken about the fact that you're only 20. But what? 20, she's 21 years old, and she actually is standing up for a man who, you know, mm -hmm. this isn't going to affect her life. This is going to affect his life. Yeah. So... I, I was just really proud of her, and I think she's an incredible woman, and I, I'm really... I'm thank you so much, yes, Ellen. Yes, thank you, Ellen, yeah. because we need more young people like that. We do, and I think uh, social media, that's the other thing, right? Instagram Live, like, yeah. that's... Look, like, it's literally getting to Ashley Graham, and, like, we're <laughs> talking about this right now, but yeah. I don't... I think that's, like, the most beautiful thing about being a young person in this day and age. Like, I look at Yara Shahidi. Yes. You need to have her on the show. Oh, she I know. Is so Write it down, Yara. Write it down, girl. <laughs> but see uh, young people doing amazing things, yep. and it's... Sometimes that's, like, the most uh, effective way. It is. You know, because she could have sat down. She could have not... Not cared. Not cared. You know, how many people would have just been on that plane, not known, not, you know, just kind of clueless, just I know doesn't affect me, doesn't affect my life. I didn't even know that you could do this legally. So I'm actually, I mean, uh -oh. not, I, I don't. Now she's I'm going to stand up on airplanes. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You want to stand with me? I'm, I need to hit the gym first, but yes, <laughs> get these, car, uh, what do you call, it? What do you, what, what's this part you of your leg, calves? You need some squats and some calf workout. Yeah, just come calves. to Dog Pound with me. We talked about this. We're going to make it yeah. happen. Healthy living. That's what I'm all about. That's it. Okay, so. What I want to be all do about. Do you want to play a game? <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, so something that I do with all my guests is we do like a roundup questionnaire. And um, you just basically have to finish the sentence. So okay. my podcast is called Pretty Big Deal. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say pretty big, give you a word, and then you get to finish the sentence or something that meant something to Can you. Can we do an example? Yeah, so pretty okay. big style icon. Rihanna. Pretty big regret. Pretty big regret, um, not going to college. Okay. Only because I feel like it's so nice to have that. I think that's something every woman should try to do. You know, yeah. you education. Could still do it. I know you, people are like, "Are you twenty? Do because it." Because Carly Kloss went back to college later, mm -hmm. um, and now she's doing coding with Kloss. See, yes. there you go. Carly's uh, yeah, coding. coding. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, pretty big wish. <gasps> See Beyonce just one time, even if it's like even I met if her it's just twice ah! in one week. You twice met her in, in one week. week. I think we talked about this actually. Twice in one week. I'm still like ah. Oh. Okay, pretty big motto. I would say it's a UNICEF quote. Okay, and it's um a child in need knows no politics. I don't know why that yeah. is so um, it's not what it's like. It's I don't know why that's such a big deal for me, but I think I think back to um. Exactly. A child in need knows no politics, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. when we went to Washington, we got to talk to both uh, Republicans, Democrats, because it's it should not be like a. Us you know what them. I mean? Mm -hmm. No, of course, it's near and dear to your heart because you got here without without having to think about it and mm -hmm. no child should have to think about it. So, mm -hmm. um, all right. I want to know what's going on next for you. Where are you headed? What are you working on? OK, so. Girl, you gave me some ideas today. She's going to start <laughs> typing. Dear diary. <laughs> Back to day one. This is what had happened. What had happened was, okay, so I think I definitely want to, I want you to be my, um, what's that person like in, in the, uh, like uh, someone you look up to. A mentor? A mentor. You want me to be your mentor? Yes. Aww. I would gladly. And not to put you on the spot. Yes. I would gladly be your mentor. Because Ashley Graham, Aww. like you're a genius. Not only are you beautiful, but you, you literally, yeah. Aww. Ah! I'm of course, I'll be your you know mentor. I mean? no, that's when I think of like a the boss. Dog cells <laughs> crying. <laughs> How dramatic. Ashley, when I think about you. Oh my God, thank so, you. Yeah, I want to I wanna be able to do what you did for women. Like, girl, we don't look alike, but literally stepping into this industry, it was really scary. But you were one of those people that I looked up to because I'm like, if she could be different and she's like owning everything that makes her unique, makes mm -hmm. her beautiful, mm -hmm. why can't I do the same with my scarf? Yep. And that, that's truly the message that women like you and I have. Mm -hmm. We may be the, quote, token in a mm -hmm. lot of different runways and campaigns, but at the end of the day, we're just letting women who yeah. are women let them know that they are perfect with who they are. Yeah. Right? That's harder to um, do, though. It like, is. Like, it took you a long time. It's 
we still all have a journey. She's still, gonna, she's still getting there, but. Yeah, we all have a journey, and I think that's why we sit down and we have these conversations so we can let all of you guys know that it is a journey and it is a process. So thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank, thank you for you. being here. Not only are you beautiful, but you're smart, and you've got so much going on for you. I'm so excited to watch you thrive. Thank you. Um, Darcy, thank you. As always, the nada. I'm Ashley Graham. Thank you so much for watching Pretty Big Deal. Make sure you go on Instagram and Twitter to give us some of your comments. And don't forget Anchor. You can leave me a little voice message there. Also, I'd like to remind you that you are bold, you are brilliant, and you are beautiful. beautiful. Yes. yes. Love I you guys. My <laughs>